Right, David Cann here with another question from your Hayes and Harris Math SL textbook. We're looking at chapter 9b, question 6a, and in this question we're using the cosine rule to find a side. So in this question we want to find the exact value of x. And the question does ask for the exact value, so we're not going to be able to use any decimal approximations. We're going to need to be working with radicals and powers and things like that. So what we have is we have two sides and an angle, and we want the third side. So a tool that we might want to use is the cosine rule, because that relates the three sides of a triangle and an angle. It's Pythagorean theorem for non-right angle triangles. So we'll express the cosine rule. c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, and that's your Pythagorean theorem. Take 2ab cosine of angle c, and that's your correction factor for it not being a right angle triangle. Now the thing that we have to remember for the cosine rule is that side C is opposite to angle C. So if we intend to use this angle here, that means that this must be side C and that must be angle C. Uh, knowing that, we can then plug into the formula and we'll get c squared, which is going to be 7 squared, is equal to a and b can be either side. So we'll say that a will be our side, our unknown side, x, and b will be our known side, 6. It doesn't matter which way we go. And then we'll have take 2 times x times 6 times the cosine of angle c, 60 degrees. Uh, we'll start to simplify this by doing the powers, and we'll get 49 is equal to x squared plus 36, take 2 times 6 is 12, times x, times the cosine of 60 degrees, and from our unit circle, cosine of 60 degrees we know to be 1 half. It looks like we're going to get a quadratic because we have a squared term, and a term to the first power, and a term to the zero power. So we'll try and reorganize this in the way that we usually deal with quadratics, and that's to get 0 on one side, and we'll do that by subtracting 49 to the other side. So we'll get 0 is equal to x squared, and then 36 take 49 leaves negative 13, and 12 times a half is 6. So we get x squared, negative 6x, and negative 13 from 36 take 49. And there's our quadratic that we'll have to solve. Uh, we have 13 on the end. That's a prime number. This is supposed to come about through a multiplication of two numbers. But since it's prime, the only options are 1 and 3. And 1 and 3 do not add in or subtract in any configuration to make 6. And so solving this by our normal tools for factorization is right out. It's not going to work. Instead, we're going to have to go to our trusty backup quadratic formula. Quadratic formula tells us that our variable x will be equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Now it's unfortunate that we know the quadratic formula in terms of a's, b's, and c's, and the cosine rule in terms of a's, b's, and c's, because they refer to different a's, b's, and c's. In the cosine rule, a, b, and c refer to the sides of the triangle. In the quadratic formula, a, b, and c refer to the coefficients of each term. The coefficient out here is a, the coefficient out here is b, and the coefficient out here is c. So c is negative 13, b is negative 6, and a is 1. Those are the numbers that we're going to plug into our quadratic formula. Uh, negative b is negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now all we have to do is simplify this expression. It's all just numbers. Negative negative 6 gives us positive 6 plus or minus the square root of 6, negative 6 squared is 36. Negative 4 times negative 13 gives us um, positive 52, and we'll divide all of that by 2. Uh, next up, we'll try and add those two together, 
and we'll distribute the division by 2 into each of the terms on top. So we'll get 6 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 36 plus 52 is 88 over 2 because we distributed the 2 into each term. 6 over 2 is 3 plus or minus. I'd like to distribute the 2 into the square root of 88. To do that, I need to make them both square roots. So that's the square root of 88 divided by the square root of 4. This allows me to say 3 plus or minus the square root of 88 over 4. Square root of all of that. 88 divided by 4 is 22. And we get 3 plus or minus the square root of 22. And those are two exact answers for the angle. But there's two answers. The question is, are they both valid or are only one of them valid? And the answer comes down to the value of 20, square root of 22, which we don't know how to calculate. But we do know that the square root of 9 is equal to 3. And if the square root of 9 is equal to 3, then the square root of 22 ought to be greater than 3. And if the square root of 22 is greater than 3, then we can say that 3 take away the square root of 22 is negative. And we can't have a negative length. Therefore, 3 minus the square root of 22 is not a solution, leaving just one answer. 3 plus the square root of 22 is equal to the unknown side x.